Gemini, hi. Welcome to your love reading for November 2020. Thank you for joining me. My name's Amanda. I'm at Lunacy Tarot. So this is for you if you are thinking about somebody, thinking about a connection, a love connection, in a relationship, or just want to learn a little bit more about the person that you are involved with or potentially involved with in November 2020. I've shuffled your cards off camera, so I'm going to give it a, a last shuffle and then we will get started. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to split the deck three ways and let's get into this. Let's sync up. All right, in the position of you and what you're contributing is the five of wands. Conflict, change, competition, conflicted. In the position of them and what they are contributing is the king of wands. Ooh, the king of wands is uh, at the top of their game, on point, um, a leader, very, very adept at gathering their network in order to execute a task, right? So very fiery, very passionate, very creative, um, and in a position of authority, leadership, passionate. Did I say that? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Composite energies, the seven of wands, guarded. Yeah, guarding, defended. In the position of the insight is the Queen of Cups. Coming from a place of the heart, very connected to emotions, nurturing. This is like a mother type figure. This is the insight, possibly what is needed. Connection with your emotions, connection with your heart. This relationship connection needs uh, to be connected with some sort of emotional state needs an emotional connection. <clears throat> okay, let's clarify. Alrighty, so um, in the position of you, we have the five of wands. What we see here in this card are five figures. They all have wands, so they all have something to that they're bringing to the competition. And they're sort of testing one another. It's like a testing energy. It's like a competitive testing energy. So how is it that you are viewing this connection in November? Let's clarify with the, the tarot of sexual magic here. How are you viewing this connection in November? Ooh, the high priestess. So there's, I, I get the sense that there is a... Hmm, a withdrawal, a turning within, a quiet, a silence. It could be that you're not communicating with your connection at this moment. The King of Wands is looking directly at the Five of Wands. Like, like just, it's almost like, sorry, I'm going to deviate here because I just got my attention drawn to the fact that this is you and this is them. It's almost as if the King of Wands is judging this competition really observing what's happening here and is kind of sitting afar or sitting at a distance and watching and judging. Like he's the one that's going to decide who wins, who the winner is. Uh, it just occurred to me. This is how, this is clarifying the five of wands and how you are viewing this connection in November. And I get the sense that you are really turning within to glean the answers, looking within, turning within, to learn more about how you feel potentially about the connection. Let's see what they are bringing to the table, how they are viewing the connection. The King of Wands. You know, the King of Wands is somebody that you want on your side when you're about to begin a new business. Um, you're initiating something, a new project, a new endeavor, a new pursuit, uh, because they have resources at hand and they really know, again, how to leverage their network in order to make it happen, in order to realize 
something. So this is how they're viewing the connection in November. The sun. Oh, this is the happiest card in the deck. And by the way, ruler of the king of wands, source energy. Very positive take on this connection in November. This is the yes card, like all in, all in. Um, it's also a time, if you look at the imagery and the symbolism in this card, this is like an Adam and Eve vibe, right? There's this harvest, this bounty at their feet. Like anything is possible. It's a feeling of expansion and expansiveness. This is how they're viewing this connection in November. It's the King of Wands. What's this defended energy though? What's this defended energy about? This is in the composite energy. This is what happens when the two of you come together, this like heavily defended, guarded stance. Which is confusing me at the moment because we have the King of Wands watching this conflict that represents you or the competition that represents you. It's like almost like they're like deciding something about you, deciding something about what you're capable, capable of, what you're bringing to the table, if you're able to compete, if you're able to win inside of this competition. This is clarifying. Holy moly, I don't think I've ever seen this card before. This is clarifying the defended energy. What happens when the two of you come together in November and it's the magician. Similarities right off the bat. He's holding a sword heading in this direction and he is holding a wand heading in this direction. The magician is the initiator. It's the one comes after the zero, which is the void. It's the new beginning. It's the first thing that comes out of the void, right? The initiator, having the tools and energy and resources, you need to bring something into fruition and something into reality. And very intentional about bringing this thing into reality. Um, he's working magic. Look, he's at the table. He's got the, the sword, the anatheme, theme, and the chalices. All these symbols of magic. The full moon behind him. All this power available to him. And this is clarifying this defense. Dude, somebody's trying to make something happen here. <laughs> and somebody else is like, uh-uh. No, I don't think so. No. Like this defense is intense and I feel like it's coming from your side because you have straight out the gates, you have this five of wands, like conflicted, challenged, competition, testing, energy, um, blocking. There's a lot of blocking. Look at how, how all of these characters are blocking one another. Clarifying that is the high priestess really turning within to find answers. This is an intentional turning within to find answers. To, to like connect with how you really feel, to learn the secrets, to find the answers. And then in the composite energies, we have somebody defending themselves, somebody trying to make shit happen. It's like you are defending yourself against this person who's attempting to realize, bring down to earth, manifest something into reality with you. Maybe something, somebody that's very interested in you in November. <clears throat> this person, potentially, the King of Wands, who really has this high expectations for this relationship, for this connection, feeling really high vibe and feeling really good about what it, whatever it is that they think this connection is about. They're feeling good about this relationship, this connection, this partnership. But I'm not getting the sense that you're feeling, you're like sharing that vibe. Um, Queen of Cups. Let's clarify the insight. The Queen of Cups in the insight. So this queen always weirds me out a little bit in this deck because <laughs> there's this narrative that surrounds her traditionally, which is that she's very nurturing, very motherly, very... Um, emotionally 
available, very grounded, um, very positive. However, I'm going to show you this. Look at the way that she appears in this card. She is freaking intense. Look at her facial expression. She looks mad, disgruntled, um, discontent. And she's holding this very gothic kind of creepy looking chalice and really directing all of her intense energy toward it. And so if the chalice represents her emotions, she's like super involved with it. And it's intense. It's really intense. I almost get the sense that somebody's going to be upset. This is the insight, right? So let's clarify the insight. Somebody is focusing too much, too intensely on it, and somebody might not be very happy. Let's see. We got three cards that popped up. Now, this is clarifying the insight, the Queen of Cups, the Empress. Ooh, okay. The Eight of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles. They're playing a game. Okay. So, ooh, the, the Empress and the Queen of Cups quite a lot remind me of one another um, in their, their meaning and symbolism. It is, you know, they're both queens. Um, the Empress is abundant, really connected with, you know, her quintessential energy, uh, very nurturing, often seen as the mother, creative, uh, able to just create abundance around her wherever she goes, very loving, very nurturing. The Eight of Pentacles. Somebody is, the, the energy in this card is somebody is very, uh, feeling very romantic about someone and another person is not really connected to that feeling. So we're seeing this all the way through this reading at this point that somebody's invested in this connection and somebody is not really feeling it or feeling tested, feeling challenged, um, feeling defended, feeling guarded blocked to sort of manifesting this connection, blocked to moving forward with this connection. And then finally, to clarify the Queen of Cups in the insight, we have the King of Pentacles. This is a game. This woman is sort of hiding from him and, and there, it looks like they're kind of chasing each other and it's like coquettish, like she's being very coquettish and he's like, I'm here to save the day. Look at his cape and he's all muscle bound. I don't, I don't understand this in terms of the traditional um, meaning of the King of Pentacles. This doesn't line up, but often the sexual, the tarot of sexual magic doesn't, the symbolism and the the cards doesn't often line up with the traditional meaning. So you, it's best just to look at what's happening in this picture. She's feeling very modest, very humble, like not humble, but modest. Like, oh, you know, either she's playing a game, she's very coquettish, or she's like, I, I'm, I'm actually feeling very like exposed and, and modest here and, and not necessarily wanting to directly connect. And I do get that vibe here from this reading in general. Somebody's not necessarily wanting to connect, not really like uncertain about if they want to connect with this person. And another person is like, I'm here for it, right? King of Wands, Sun, Magician. <laughs> Shit. Uh, it's like full on radiant passion towards this connection. Well, yeah, just like, f like fully exposed, like breasts out, tits out, like wanting, wanting you. And you're kind of like, uh, 
I'm thinking about something else. Not so sure. Do I really want to play this game? Okay, well, let's dive a little bit deeper, Gemini. Let's dive a little bit deeper here into you. How do you perceive this person? How do you perceive this person? When you, when you think about them, what do you see? Also want to know why. I guess we'll, we'll ask that question next. If it's you that's having a hard time connecting <clears throat> with this connection, with this person in November, let's learn more about why that might be. Who's defended, who's guarded, and why? But first, how do you see this person in November this connection, how do you see them? If this reading is resonating with you, please do hit the like button. It does help my work to elevate and the reading to circulate. Oh, and I really appreciate your support. All right, let's look at this. Also, I should mention that if you'd like a personal reading, I'm doing those now. The link is below. What we have, and when you look at this person, what do you see? These are positive cards. Silence and consciousness. Speaking of the void, I know that I mentioned that before that the magician follows the void. It's the thing that comes out of the void, the very first thing. This is the void. Anything is possible, pure potential. You know, it all exists there in the void. This is what you think when you see this person, when you think about them. This is how you see them. Anything is possible. Right now it might seem black and dense and dark and like you can't really see what's in the void, right? Because it's the void. Um, but they are going to come out of the void with this magician energy in the composite, in the composite energy. And then again, this came out to clarify how you see them and that is silence. So we were talking about silence with the high priestess that clarified you in November. Turning within. Turning within for the answers. I get a sense that when you think about this person, when you think about this connection, there's a lot that you don't see. There's a lot of unknowns. And you're really sitting with that and contemplating that. And you're in that place. You're just solidly in that place of like, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot that I don't see. And there's a turning within to learn those answers. To learn more. All right. How do, how do they see you? How do they see you in November? I mean, we got the sun for how they feel about the connection. This is like a... They feel like this is a soulmate connection. An Adam and Eve, like, back to the basics, like the original people connecting type energy. But how do they see you? When they look at you, when they think of you, what do they see? Okay, here we go. Guidance. Ooh, wow. So they, they see an angel. <laughs> they think of you as very angelic as able to guide them in some way maybe they maybe you're an you're an expert or have achieved a certain status and they are perceiving you as being able to guide them in some way some unique way that they haven't experienced before three is a number of harmony and collaboration I mean, the King of Wands and the Sun energy and the Magician energy are all about making something happen on the business front. It might be that you are connected with this person through business, through work. Maybe there is some sort of vocation that is connecting the two of you where you are offering guidance to them or they see that you can guide them where it comes to this initiative, this new endeavor in some way. Um, what was the other thing that we said that we wanted to talk about? How you think about them, how they think about you. 
Oh, right. What is this guarded energy about? What do we want to use for that? Um, let's just use this gilded tarot. What is this guarded energy about? If there's some uncertainty in this connection, what is that about? Because I do get that. There are several cards that are insinuating some sort of uncertainty on the part of someone in this connection. Now, sometimes the energies can be flipped. So whether it's you or them is a, uh, you'll know, you know. Um, but it's coming from, I feel like it's coming from you because on their end, it's so strong in terms of like certainty, the sun, the king of wands looking right at you, the magician, that's the composite energy. So what is this uncertainty about? Ooh, okay. <coughs> Nine of wands carrying a heavy burden. Seven of swords, a sneaky deception manipulation. Four of cups, a missed opportunity. Death, an ending. <laughs> Damn, that's pretty strong. This uncertainty is about some betrayal that happened. Some sneaky behavior, some deception, a missed opportunity, feeling very burdened, and in the midst or in the throes of an intense transformation that is undeniable and non-negotiable. Somebody might be still in working through some of this type of energy. And you might have somebody coming into your life or somebody in your life right now that is just, I wanted to say on a totally different level, but it's not level. It's um, they're in a different space. They, you might be hiding or they might, whoever this is might be hiding the fact that you're going through all of this. Not completely upfront about it because I say that because the other energy seems to be completely unaware of this. Or acting as, I mean, how, how unaware can you possibly be? Even when somebody's not sharing directly, verbally, like, hey, I've been through some shit. I'm still kind of working it out. I'm still feeling this way. Even if you're not sharing that verbally, you, there's cues, right, that um, are sent off, that are, that are available. And so this person doesn't even seem to be picking up on the cues, Except that the king is watching very intently this challenge, this conflict. Conflict uh, it was like this. So if they are picking up on the cues, they're not really acknowledging them and they want to move forward with you um, despite, despite the cues. All right. Um, hmm. <clears throat> Let's play with the dark mirror a little bit. Why does this person want to move forward with you? Why are they not paying attention to the cues? Or, you know, if it's not you, why is this energy present here? Of the King of Wands and the, the Sun? Oh. Gilded regret. There's definitely a sense of regret. Do they feel like they missed out on something? Gilded. When something is gilded, it is ornate, lavish, rich. It's like you got, you're, you're surrounding yourself with all of this gold and this lavishness. And it's an acting as if kind of energy, but it's behind the gilded mirror or behind the gilded ornate lavishness is a deep sense of regret. And this was clarifying the question that we asked, which was why this energy of coming forward in such a strong way, despite this uncertainty? I wonder if they feel like they missed out on an opportunity with you. And they are pushing forward despite all of the cues. They don't want to miss out on an opportunity with you. <clears throat> 
and they're ignoring some of the signs. This defense. This defense. Why this defense? I hope I'm not beating a dead horse here. <laughs> um, addicted. Queen of my world. Wow. Anger and chains. That's interesting in imagery there. Anger and chains. Something unresolved. The question was why this defense? Something unresolved. Anger, feeling bound to some thing from the past, feeling unresolved anger about it, feeling still very much tied to somebody from the past. This queen, just the queen of my world and addicted. Either addicted to this past connection or literally addicted to something, to a substance or to someone, just addicted to this unresolved issue from the past. Wow. Okay. Let's pull a card of advice for you. I don't know what I want to work with. I don't really want to work with that one. Excuse me. This deck is stuck in the box. Okay, let's work with the Crystal Wisdom Healing Oracle. It's by Judy Hall. She has an excellent book that describes the uh, properties of all of the crystals and the gems and the minerals. And it's very beautifully illustrated. And now she has this tarot deck or oracle deck. So some guidance. Oh some guidance for you as you move through November, where it comes to this connection. What do you need to know, Gemini? Some specific guidance for you. If this reading resonates, hit the like button. If you're interested in a private reading, a personalized reading with me, I'm doing those now. It's very exciting for me, at least. I love connecting with all of you especially inside of personal readings. Those are really fun. I think the best readings are interactive and collaborative and, you know, you get to ask questions in real time. Um, yeah, the, the link is below if you're interested in that. Okay, so what we have here is the Golden Healer. Oh, I've never seen this one. The Golden Healer. Two and seven, 27. Two and seven is nine. That's nearing completion. Nearing completion, Golden Healer. Let's read about it. Gemini. Ultimate healing. Beautiful. Golden healers are imbued with powerful transformative healing energies. They are a catalyst for profound spiritual activation. Self-understanding. Understanding the quantum world helps you understand yourself. The everyday self is bounded by five senses expanded by a sixth metaphysics, but this can be transcended to move into a field that is non-local everywhere and nowhere at once where there is no time. You create the event by being, you create the event being observed, allow your soul rather than your ego to be your guide soul connection. Divination. Recognize your potential to be an amazing healer. Your abilities needed honing, and those who heal are souls scoured to develop empathy. Wow, that's a, pa a packed sentence. Your abilities needed honing. And those who heal are soul scoured to develop empathy. Much in your life needs transforming. Surrender willingly to the process. Someone clinging to the past holds you back. Encourage them to let go. You may be asked to transform your environment or take on a challenging task. Do so with grace and ease. Healing insight. Healing flows through you. It's a process, not something you do. The frequency is exceptionally high. The chakra is soul star and gateway, stellar gateway, and it aligns and cleanses all. The timing is every moment. 
The soul path is a channel for Christ consciousness. Fascinating. Okay, so the things that stood out to me here are much in your life needs transforming. There is definitely an energy here of somebody holding on to the past. Unresolved issues from the past. Uncertainty, defense, guardedness. Um, so there's a healing, like a soul scouring that needs to take place in order to develop empathy, empathy for yourself, empathy for others. I guess empathy is the ability to feel the feelings of another person. All right, Gemini, I hope that was helpful. If it was, please hit the like button, share with your friends, comment below. I'd love to hear about what this is all about for you in November, 2020. Um, and uh, I'm wishing you the best this month. Take good care.